this is Kate Helmers from the Stepping Forward with Kate show. Welcome. Today we have Diane Ferrari Magaldi, author of Looking for Davy Jones, which is a 1967 coming of age tale. But the exciting part is we're going to uncover the secrets of what it was really like to grow up in Hollywood. So welcome. Thank you for having me on the show. I'm really excited to be here. Oh good. I'm so glad. And just so you know, we actually went to grammar school together. We did. Diana was in eighth grade when I was in fourth grade, and I thought it was the absolute coolest thing <laughs> because they had big sisters at the time. And when you got into fourth grade, you got to be you got to have a big sister. And Diana was my big sister, and I hadn't seen you for wow quite, quite until just years. four or five years ago. Right. Even right. though we had mutual friends, and we have a lot of friends that still keep in contact with each other. But it was so good seeing you. It was wonderful. And you'll find out some really funny stories through this when we go through it. But our tradition, as you know, is mm -hmm. to ask five questions okay. so that we all can get to know you a little bit okay. better. Are you ready? Go, go ahead. Oh, good. What is a favorite book or quote that's inspired you? Well, my favorite book is the Bible, but as far as um, a book that you know, I would read, it was the the White uh, the White Princess. Oh, yeah, and also, well, how many books? Also, books from Diana Gobbledon, The Outlander. Oh, okay. So, oh. I like historical fiction. Okay. I read a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have a morning ritual that you that gets you going in the morning? Well, it's kind of funny because, you know, as you get up in, in age a little bit, you know, I'm, I start out like the mummy, you know, <laughs> I get, you know, get tweaking all, everything out, and uh, then I, I try to exercise a little bit, I, and then I do, I say, say my prayers and my devotion and meditation, and, uh, and that's what gets me going. Yeah. That's what gets me going in the morning, yeah. Wakes Definitely. everything up. Yeah. And what was a favorite Christmas or holiday that you had? Oh, so many! I, you know, Christmas is always my favorite. Christmas Eve, just being with the family, and uh, all the cooking and the memories. Now, do yeah. you? You're a oh, definitely a yes. We cook. So, do you do the seven fishes? We we do the yeah. the feast of the seven fishes. Absolutely, oh, so good. Yeah. And how many children do you have? I well, we have all together. You know, we have six children. Mm -hmm. I I have two, and uh, Dennis has four. And together, we are a wonderful blended family. We also have eight grandchildren and wow. two on the way, so we're very blessed, really. How exciting. And what type of vacation do you like to take to relax? Well, t to be honest with you, we have such a lovely home, and it's kind of our stay. Staycation? Staycation, yeah. We have be my beautiful backyard is where I like to be oh, mostly. But, you know, we've been to other places. We've been to Europe, and but mostly just staying at home, believe it or not. Wow. Yeah. What a gift to have that. Yeah. So you've had such an interesting background. Um, early years in Ohio. Yes. And then you were moved out to Hollywood. Yes. That must have been quite a culture shock. <laughs> it was. It, w it was very difficult for me. Uh, I had, you know, the big Italian family there coming out here. Uh, eventually we, you know, we made friends and we had, my grandfather was out here. But it was really hard. I was only 11. I had to leave my best friend. And moving from um, a very kind of conservative background uh, and, and coming to California where the weather was so different and so hot and dry compared to, you know, all of the beautiful seasons that we have in Ohio. So that was difficult. It was very difficult for me to adjust to that. But and eventually then I did. On top of that, so when we went to school in the late 60s, yes. In Hollywood, mm -hmm. the school, the grammar school we went to, was just south of the Sunset Strip. Yes, yeah. that would be the Sunset Strip in the 60s. It was our stomping ground. Absolute yeah. craziness going yes. on. And the reason it was called the Strip, just so you know, was because there was this piece of area that was not in Los Angeles City, and it was unincorporated. It was in Los Angeles County. So consequently, the, the cops couldn't go in there to get anybody. You, it was, yeah. Oh, well, not a okay. lot of love oh, people know, know that. that. So it was okay. the sheriff's department, and the uh -huh. sheriff's department couldn't go into Los Angeles City. Okay. And that's why, if, um, not that I would know this personally, <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of people I knew, um, if you were smoking pot or something like that and could get over one of the lines, either to Beverly Hills on the Sunset Strip or over Fairfax into Los Angeles City, they couldn't stop you. So, 
It was, that was why there were a lot of uh, sex, drugs, and rock and roll right Absolutely. on the Sunset Strip. Yeah. And then, of course, there was Hollywood Boulevard with all the theaters and, and all of that. So, and then, as you mentioned in your book. I loved Sunset Strip better. Than, yes, Hollywood. than Hollywood, because all the kids were out there hanging out. Yeah, it was a big true. party, no matter where right. where you went, <laughs> and no matter what time of day or not. That's right. <laughs> that's that's right. And party. everybody was cool. It was yeah. hey, peace, man. You know, everybody was. Uh, it, yeah. it, it's just a nice energy. And then you yeah. have your peace. I have my so peace sign. Yes, <laughs> <That's laughs> I, I tried to wear the newest thing nowadays, which is suede coming back, uh -huh. and uh, it was so big at the time right <laughs> very retro not necessarily real sweet. I would have but... brought mine but I can't fit in it anymore so. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then as you mentioned in your book going up Laurel Canyon so Laurel Canyon was going up into the Hollywood Hills but it was just two two and a half blocks up right from where we were and going into the canyon was a completely different it was magical. It was magical. It was magical, yes. It was the hippie area. Yeah. It was, they had a canyon store in the middle, and we're actually going to visit some of those areas when we go from here right, to right. show you. But at the time, there were the flower children, there was the Vietnam War, right, the right. sexual revolution. Right. I mean, you go into all of this and yes. how it affected you guys as it did. middle schoolers. Absolutely. Uh, there, there was a lot of chaos going on, you know, because of the, the Vietnam War and the images on the television. Yeah. Uh, stories that were always looming around about family members or you know who are who were over there, um, and and the, and the thing that brought me solace or brought the girls solace were was the the music, rock and roll, each other, the friendship, and uh, what we did is we we actually uh, stayed in Laurel Canyon. That's where one of the girlfriends were, and we had our that we were looking for um, certain celebrities, and we thought that that was going to bring us happiness. And uh, that's basically that's it's what the we story did. of that's that. kind of the story. Yeah, there's so much more to it. Yeah, yeah. but it, it was it was a crazy time to, to grow up, uh, but also fun, yeah, and exciting and different. And that's For, really what you bring out in the book. Absolutely, is, is all of that stuff, all at the same time. Right, right. Which was wild. So, a very interesting read. Um, so, first question is. Are there things that you miss about Ohio, even though it was it was when you were really small? Oh my gosh, um, I miss I miss the people, the family. I think the thing the thing one of the things that I I bring out in the book is how friends can become family, and this family and we did have our our, our relatives, but this big Italian family was um, they became our family, and I miss them. They treated us like family, and so I brought that through into my other relationships in, that I bring out in the book with, with girlfriends and how they became family to me. Uh, so that's one thing that I miss about Ohio. The other is is the fall. There's nothing mm. like it. Absolutely nothing <laughs> like it. You, know, you can go visit it, but right. Yeah, it's, jumping yeah. in the leaves and you know, raking them up and it just, you know, the air. That was my favorite time of year. It still is. Now, are yeah. you still friends with the girlfriends that... I know this yes. book is a compilation of yes. stories. Yes, yes. Uh, but there's some fun, fun little things in it. Uh, so you're still friends with all the girls that you were talking well, about? Not, well, I shouldn't say all of them. There, there are two girls, uh, the main characters, that um, the names are the same. And we still, after all these years, we're, we still get together, you know, and um, we go to see movies for our, our, and we get together on our birthdays. It's really a blessing because it's, you know, after many, many years, you know, it, it's uh, if you have one or two friends that you, you've had since childhood, there, I mean, Th those are those are uh, family members that you choose. Yeah, it's so true. <laughs> and it's 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 really a great relationship. And they know yeah. things. So yeah, if you could let, if you had three things to tell kids that have to move a lot or starting a new school, what would they be? What are a few things you know that you can make friends and keep them for a lifetime? You need to create. Well. I think uh, having friends for a lifetime it takes two, you know. It, it it does because you could you know you can try with some people and, uh, and 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 sometimes that may not work out. But the transience of childhood is inevitable, and so you know you have friends that come in and out of your life for a reason for a season. This is all very true, and uh, but but as far as advice that I could give uh, younger children or uh, people moving from another state going to a different school is to just know. That they're not alone. Yeah. That they, we've all gone through all of this. That the, the insecurities that they may feel, they can, or not wanting to 
uh, afraid that somebody's going to see, you know, or, or see what's inside. And it's okay. It's okay because no matter what era you grew up in, everybody who's gone through this, this uh, period of time has the uh, same experience or similar experience. And it's all going to be okay. But mainly, you know, talk to your parents. Let them know how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. Talk to each other. Have some trust. And um, that's what I would say. To okay. a young, young person. And we also talked um, about the fact that you have a bigger than life older sibling. I do. Yes. And that having that, how would you, I mean, you know, there are a lot of kids that have uh, older brothers that are big football players, right, right. stars, or at high school, or, you know, sisters that are doing something. So, how would you tell people to handle a bigger than life? So, uh, from the perspective of, of the younger child, right, the, right. You know, a teen. Uh, uh, from a teen, um, I think it's important to let let uh, you know communicate with the older sibling and mostly the parents, mostly the parents to try to let them know how that overshadowing shadowing can affect you know not just you, you know just all all of the younger children. So it, sometimes it's not very it's not easy. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. kind of difficult and. Some older siblings, whether they're famous or not, don't realize um, how important and how much we look up to the older the older siblings. So there's kind of a lesson there for both. Yeah. yeah. Just pay attention and communicate. Right. And especially the parents. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you also mentioned yes. that in searching for Davy Jones, it turns out completely different than you think it's going to. Right. But you get do get to meet them, and it was... So exciting. Um, how? It, go, ahead. go ahead. No, ask the question. Go ahead. Oh, so how did that turn out for you personally? Well, personally, um, the, the message in the story is like we always think that it, when we're going out to find something else outside of ourselves or our family, that it's going to be so much better. Mm -hmm. And kind of like what Dorothy did in The Wizard of Oz. And, and the thing is, is that. Um, what what Diane does in the story is is include her friends and try to help them and when that happens you learn more about love and friendship and what that that's truly all about and that we really have everything we need is really right inside of us it's just a matter of that 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 that's the journey part of the spiritual journey of just knowing that um, we already have it inside mm -hmm. and you know, we we don't have to search outside to, to find that happiness, and you know, love and happiness is really comes from um, helping others, seeking out and helping others, and that's one of the messages. Oh, it's such a great message, but yeah. it's such an exciting way that it right. unfolds. Yes. So I don't know if you know this, but, but. <laughs> you know, of course. I knew my I have a brother that's four years older than I that was a year older than you right, right. and so as an eighth grader seventh grader and eighth grader right. you knew a lot of his friends I did and because the guys were always hanging at our house playing basketball and everything got to know them and so I'm reading through this book <laughs> and get to the first kiss that she she talks about the, her first kiss and all of that is so sweet and I realized I knew the guy. <laughs> It was the first time that it ever happened to me with a book. It was so oh, wonderful. Sweet. wonderful. I know. Yeah. It was really, um, but I loved the way that you um, talked about it right. and just brought it up in such a sweet fashion. Right. Well, it was, it was an innocent and sweet time, and uh, for some reason I remember everything. And so uh, he was very special, he was very sweet, carried my books, that sort uh -huh. of thing. And uh, the first kiss, you know, we always remember our first mm -hmm. kiss. And our first boyfriend. So yes, it yeah. was just such a funny thing that <laughs> happened. So okay, now it's time for thirty seconds of fun. Okay, you ready? Okay, I'm ready. So we're gonna. I'm gonna ask you as many questions as I possibly can. So okay. We're talking real fast, and okay. you can answer them all in thirty seconds. One word. One word answers, or yep. just just whatever. Okay. Whatever you can do in thirty seconds. Okay, here we go. <laughs> favorite monkey song. A day do daydream believer. Oh, favorite movie from back then. Camelot. Hollywood Boulevard or Sunset Strip? Sunset Strip. Favorite part of modeling when you were modeling? Favorite part? Um, the clothes, the <laughs> makeup. <laughs> okay, and you had white boots that I remember. Nancy, do you still have those? I don't. I don't. You remember them. That's one thing I don't remember. <laughs> and favorite dish that your mom made? Calamari. 
Oh, yum. Yeah. And favorite dessert? Um, Jamocha omelet fudge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, 30 seconds We're is up. up. Okay. <laughs> so one last story I have to explain sure. okay. to everyone is that even with a bigger than life sister, etc., and the stories that you talk about in the book, right. what's wild is all of our perceptions because as a fourth grader right. looking at an eighth grader and we're yeah. going to have pictures you sent us pictures which was so sweet yeah. Diana for me was the bomb first of all I would see you on I, never, street. I never knew right well I never knew you thought that it was like really Hello. Me? you had you straight know. hair I <laughs> blonde hair she was the coolest gonna be a model and she had Nancy Sinatra white boots <laughs> <laughs> that to me was just the epitome. So it's funny how you look at things. Um, well, at the time, it, it, you know, at, you mentioned that too, and it, it that's what one of the messages in the book is that for for kids, you know, I, I was really very insecure. I wrote about all of that, and so for you reading that, it was like, shocking. wow, is this the same person? Right, it was and and that just right. goes to show that everybody has that yeah. those insecurities that they hide up, that they hide within them and, and they put on this other persona which really isn't truly them. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you found out I, I wasn't as cool as, <laughs> <laughs> yes, you, as you thought. Yes, you were. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody has some insecurities and we just get over them and it's, it's exactly. getting confidence and figuring out how to do it. Absolutely. So it's a yeah. fun read, thank you. And now thank you. we are off to Hollywood. We're gonna go to Laurel Canyon. That's right. Where See it all there. happens. <laughs> <laughs> See you up there. We're up in Laurel Canyon at the Country Canyon store, and we have video from around here, but in your book you mention so many people that were here in the oh, 60s. Yeah. This is like amazing just to be back here after all this time. This was like considered the uh, Los Angeles Haight-Ashbury during the time, 1960s, all throughout, and there were so many uh, musicians and artists that were here. Jim Morrison was, they said that he lived behind this store and that's where he got his inspiration for, you know, many of his, uh, his songs like Love Street, we had uh, Joni Mitchell, Linda Ronstan, the, the Birds, I think, yeah, all of them were here. And Carol it was King, just Joan Baez, Ca Carol so King, my favorite, and of course the Monkees, and they all either lived or visited here during that time. And they were the best and greatest in, uh, musicians in our gener of our generation. It's Just a wild amazing, and crazy place. wild and crazy place. Yeah. I have a lot of memories here and a lot of stories in the book of being up here on Rid Path with with girlfriends, slumber parties, and looking for our pop icons. So <laughs> so excited to be back here. So thank you for being with us. Her book is Looking for Davy Jones. Thank which you. is fantastic. Thank you. And we'll have her Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram right below. Take a look and check it out. Fantastic photos, fantastic stories, and we can't wait to hear more stories that come out of you. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Absolutely. Right. Great for you to be with us today. Peace. And <laughs> check us out on your10keys.com. I'm Kate Helmers, Stepping Forward with Kate Show. Be blessed.